what's so exciting about today is that Raindance has met so many filmmakers over the years, and I have seen so many films that are worthy of people seeing, but outside of the festival circuit, they haven't gone anywhere. So I was very fortunate to meet Ian McKee and uh, Ben Locke from Vueler uh, about six months ago now, and through their amazing website, which is transformative in the way that films are bought and sold. You see, normally you get a sales agent, they go to the big film markets like Cannes or the American film market, they would sell the main territories, but once those territories are sold, um, they forget about all the other territories. I would like you to all, if you reach at the bottom into your reaction buttons, you'll see different emojis, but I'd like you to give a big rain dance welcome to the founder and CEO of Vueler.com, someone who has made selling your film <clears throat> much more accessible than anyone else. Please welcome Ian McKee. Gosh, thank you very much. Thanks, Elliot. The, uh... The big build-up now. Now I now I have a high hurdle to reach. So um, nice to meet you all. Uh, thank you very much for for coming on and joining this uh, this session. Um, I'm going to step you through um, uh, the the topics that uh, we're going to cover, which is really just uh, first of all an introduction to you know what our uh, online film markets are all about, um, and. Then uh, just a bit of kind of how to, you know, just to demystify it and show that it's a relatively easy and straightforward process. Um, going to talk through some of the steps in the process that relate to the kind of commercials of that process. So whether it's about uh, avails and rights management, whether it's about um, the the way that offers are made by buyers, because uh, that's what you hope to receive. So you get to explain kind of how they're structured and how they work. Um, and uh, the fact that this is a global industry and our platform is global. So, you know, you may well be getting offers from uh, any country in the world. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Then I uh, also wanted to cover off the point that this is not an either or type decision whether you work with a distributor or a sales rep or an agent or an online marketplace, this is all additive. And it just gives you more opportunities and access to, you know, more, more chance to grain licensing revenue from, uh, from your piece of art, your, your film. <clears throat> and then we'll talk about more, and I think we'll probably do that as a discussion, Elliot, uh, to, to come and join in about what we're really setting out to do by working together with uh, with rain dance and how uh, you know working together you know we're hoping that you know two plus two will make at least five and hopefully maybe six and seven um, I think it's a really interesting group that we have around here so as we as we're going along um, if I'm not clear about something or you want to ask a question pop it up in the chat box I've got that on the screen next to me. So I'll be able to kind of keep an eye on that and be able to address your question there. So if that's all good, let's make a start. So um, the first question is, you know, really, you know, what is one of these things? Um, and that's a very valid question because uh, really short of a couple of years ago when we launched in 2020, the concept of an online content marketplace really didn't exist at all. So this is a brand new idea for the industry. Um, now, marketplaces are not new. Of course, you know, we've had physical marketplaces for a long time. And in fact, many other industries have already been transformed by marketplace. Uh, Uber, for example, is a marketplace. It's where uh, a marketplace where people who need a ride from A to B meet people who are willing to drive you from A to B. Uh, Airbnb is a marketplace. Um, uh, Expedia is a marketplace. So marketplaces have transformed almost every, every uh, industry um, because they offer some very unique 
advantages both to the people who are on the buy side of a marketplace as well as advantages to people who are on the sell side of a marketplace. <clears throat> um, what we're doing that's unique is taking some of those kind of well understood pieces of technology and business processes and bringing them to this industry because for whatever reason, this industry has survived for many decades without really kind of adapting and, and using some of the new technology that's come around that these other industries have used. So the, if I, I spend a moment or two talking about the underlying thesis, you know, wh why is it that we thought doing this was a good idea and why now? So the underlying thesis for, for Viola and online content marketplaces is that uh, what we have seen is a fragmentation and a distribution globally of the production of really high quality, interesting, creative content. So, you know, in my days when I was 10 years old and growing up in the UK, when I turned on the TV, I would probably expect to see lots of American content and some great content from the BBC and some UK producers, but really that would be about it. And in America, you'd be lucky if you saw anything other than American made content. But interestingly, in uh, the analysis done by one of the Bloomberg analysts covering this industry, they crunch the numbers of some of the information that Netflix is now announcing. And of the top 15 titles that have been in their top 10 for the longest, eight out of 10 are non-English speaking and not out of the US. Squid Game, Money Heist, Lupin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this represents uh, the kind of the example that we've been talking about, which is the fact that now, the, the industry is transforming. There is so much more opportunity for talented filmmakers wherever they are in the world. And you don't have to be the right person in LA in order to be able to kind of build a successful career. So that was the first thesis that, you know, it was the kind of uh, the, the uh, distribution globally of this capability, the fact that great content now, you know, is being made in every country in the world. <clears throat> and one of the things I'm passionate about and that, that you know, Viola is there to do <clears throat> is to democratize the access to distribution so that it didn't matter if you were in a far flung country that was far away from LA, and it didn't matter if you weren't quite the right person to fit the stereotype that the industry likes to work with. Um, the only thing that matters is the quality of your content. So a digital marketplace, uh, which is inclusive, which is a very big part of what we're doing, democratizes the access. So on the platform, it doesn't matter who you are or where you are. It's just a question of, is your content uh, good enough, creative enough, uh, telling a, an interesting enough story, and that it's well-crafted, uh, that a buyer is gonna look at that and go, that is exactly what my audience is gonna love. And that your piece of content can sit right next to a piece of content from a company a billion dollar company that has huge distribution muscle, but you have an equal chance that the buyer will see your content and actually figure out that your content is more interesting than theirs and send you an offer for that licensing. So this is really about that kind of creation of a meritocracy, about democratizing the access to distribution and giving talented filmmakers everywhere in the world an opportunity to build a business. Um, the other side of the thesis uh, is the fragmentation of the buy side. So again, you know, when I was 
young a young lad growing up in the UK, uh, there were only a handful of places that you could sell your film to in the UK. And if they didn't buy it, you know, that, that was it. There weren't many other options. So it was a very, very uh, concentrated buy side. But with the advent of streaming and the fact that today it's so easy to build a streaming platform that reaches globally, there are today thousands and thousands, I probably want to say tens of thousands of streaming platforms all over the world. And all of them are hungry for content to feed an audience that they're trying to serve. And of course, we know that content is king and that content is the, the weapon that all of these streaming platforms need in order to, first of all, acquire an audience. And then secondly, to, uh, to be able to retain that audience. So online content marketplaces are really around being able to create that connection and enable the transaction between the people who've made a film and have the rights that they want to sell and the people that need to buy that question, buy that uh, right and be able to you know, show it to an audience. I'm just trying to read the question here. Uh, okay, Joseph, anyone, I'll take a second to stop and read your question uh, in a bit more detail. Um, the, the next point is the, that I talked about being global. So uh, we have uh, seven and a half thousand buyers registered, vetted and approved on the platform. We do a lot of marketing to build that and that's growing every day. And they're distributed in over 130 different countries in the world. So it's... Uh, by simply getting your content onto the platform, you get the opportunity for these 7,500 7, buyers uh, in all of these different locations. And if you read down the list, um, you know, you, you'll see it's very globally distributed. Um, you no longer need to try and go to a trade event in each one of these markets. Uh, or have a sales agent or a distributor in each one of these markets. Um, because as a digital platform and with a digital marketing that we do, then we give you that reach simply by being on the platform. Yeah. So very much a, a global proposition uh, from that perspective. So let's kind of step into of the kind of more practical, you know, that's the concept, that's the idea, this is what this is all about. Um, and let's get into the kind of the, the, how do I do this? What are the steps involved? But before I do, just cover off a quick um, uh, topic, which is what's the business model? How does it actually work? Well, for the buyer, registering and using the platform is 100% completely free. And the advantages that we give a buyer is that we've aggregated this catalog of really interesting content and giving them tools to be able to zoom into the content that's of interest to them, to be able to look at the trailer, watch the screener, check the avails in a very simple, intuitive way, and then for them to be able to construct an offer to be able to submit to the seller on the platform. Um, and because it's digital and it's streamlined, they can do that. And on average deals close in about 12 days on the platform, whereas offline that process can often take two months, three months, four months, five months. For the seller, uh, the proposition is that it's free to register and it's free to list your entire catalog. And we will then take on the marketing of the content that's on the platform to all of those buyers in all of those countries, plus new buyers that we're wanting to bring onto the platform. When the buyer comes to the platform, they find your content, they like it, they submit the offer through the platform to you. And then you can decide whether you want to accept it, reject it, or perhaps counter offer and ask for a little bit more money. When both sides click, the accept button because they've come to agreement on the commercial terms, 
then the system will generate the deal memo, which captures those. And then after that, the you know, simple fulfillment and making sure that you get payment. And then the way we make money is we charge a commission on the, the sale uh, once we have successfully generated revenue for you. So the sell side of the industry loves the fact that we don't charge any money up front, so zero risk, that we'll invest the money to get the content in front of buyers, and that the commission we charge is only 10%, because many agents and distributors might well want to charge you maybe double that or triple that. Um, and uh, you know that comes out of your pocket at the end of the day. Uh, a deal done through platform like ours will actually put 20% more of the value of your film back into your pocket so you can go out and make more content, right? Because that, that, that makes everyone happy <clears throat> in the industry. So let's talk through the kind of the, the, the very practical steps. Uh, this is not really meant to be a tutorial, but I just wanted you to see that it, it's actually very straightforward and, um, and easy to do. So the first thing you need to do is to go to the Raindance Film Festival Marketplace, raindance.vilo.com, or you can see it linked off the Rain, Raindance website. And there you'll find a button that says sign up for free. And when you click that button, it'll give you this dialog box where we capture your name, your email address, and your phone number. Then we send you an email to validate that. Um, and uh, when you fill in that last step, then we'll vet you and approve you because not everyone uh, that registers actually is from the industry. Lots of people try to get in who aren't from the industry. We have a process to make sure that we, we keep, we let the right people in and keep the wrong people out, right? So that we've got a, a safe community for your content to be seen and for you to interact with. Um, and then as a seller, a little arrow there kind of tells you that in your profile, you're seeing this as a seller, then uh, you will see this. And this is where you start the process as a, a seller. And the first step as a seller on the platform is to click the button that says, I want to upload a new listing. So we call a, a film or a TV show or a piece of content, we call them listings just to give it a generic name. Uh, the question is how are films marketed? Um, and can you purchase additional marketing? Um, Yes, we, we, I'll, I'll just answer that before I don't go through there. So we, the way we, we do the marketing, we have a big email database of all of our registered users, of course. And every week we will mail out a thematic uh, email marketing campaign you know, based around Women's Day, Black History Month, for romance, for Valentine's, horror, for Halloween, um, <clears throat> et cetera, um, or around events. So it could be around kid screen, or it could be around real screen, or it could be about EFM. Um, so we'll do some around those sort of events. And so we'll do that. We also have all of the right technology in place with tracking pixels and cookies and tags, so that once a buyer is registered, then they will see our marketing in their newsfeed on Instagram and on Facebook, and we'll chase them around with Google to continue making sure that they, they never forget uh, the fact that there's great content to be seen. So all of that, uh, it's called retargeting. Um, and, uh, and yes, if you want more, more marketing, then you can come uh, and, and work with us and we'll support that process. Uh, yes, uh, we, we, we market language content in, more than 90 different languages, including some that I sometimes have to look up to find out where they're spoken. So, so yes, we, you know, we are very, very global from that point of view. Okay, let's get back to the process. So once you click the add a new listing button, then uh, if you've got a handful, one, two, three films or TV shows to list, then you can use this web form. And it's very straightforward, you know, upload the poster, type in the title, type in the synopsis, cut and paste it, 
set the work time, what's the runtime, what format is available. And there's a bunch of other fields that will step you through that basically allow you to input all of the information. Um, we call it the metadata, the information about the title. So that's the first step, which was about creating the listing. The next step in the process is where you can upload the trailer, the sizzle reel, and you can upload then a screener um, to the system, and you can upload additional images, and you can upload brochures. So you can upload all of the media and creative aspects so that a buyer has everything that you would want them to see to understand that you know this is a great piece of content. Then once you hit submit on that second page, you move to the third and final page. And this is where you tell the system where you have the rights to be able to sell or license the content. And you can specify that across the three key dimensions. So the first dimension is territory. And here I've left it as if it's global. If it's your film, typically, you know, you'll have the, the rights to market and sell that globally. Um, but if you only got it for the US or if you only got it for the UK or Europe or you know, a range of countries, then you can use that drop down to specify exactly from a territory point of view where you've got the rights to sell it. Equally for the license period, if it's yours, typically it's uh, indefinite. Um, but if you are a sales agent or a, a distributor, you might have it only for a specific window of time. So we can capture that. And then the final bit is where you can specify which of the rights types you've got the, the, the license to be able to, again, to license. If it's your rights type, then it would, you would simply choose the all rights. So uh, you know, it's your film, you can do, you can license it to whoever. But if you want to be more specific, then you can choose. Free to air, of course, is then, you know, typically they're kind of a national linear broadcaster. Um, FAST is, uh, stand, it's an acronym, it stands for Free Ad Supporting Streaming TV. This is the thing that is exploding in the US. So it's a digitally delivered linear channel with ad insertion done by the platform. And uh, there's a huge amount of interest in the US. And I think we're just starting to see some of that come across to, to the UK and Europe. And I think you know, that will roll out. So we've captured that on the platform as a specific rights type. Then obviously pay TV is pay TV, everyone understands about that. Uh, and then we get into the VODs. So whether it's subscription VOD, advertising funded VOD, uh, tra transactional VOD or EST. Uh, finally, we've got transport. So that's really, you know, if you're an airline, if you're a cruise line, if you're a coach operator, basically you want to license the film uh, and show it in the back of a seat uh, on a, a, a transport, then those would be the transport rights. And then we've got the catch-all, which is other. And uh, when we see it on the buy side view, this is where people you know, type in the weird and wonderful asks, which is, you know, oh, can we license the right to make this into a board game or into an NFT or into something else that doesn't really fit anywhere else? Then we've got the other bucket so that you, know, you, can, you can manage that into the process. So very simple drop down menus, point and click uh, to, 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 set, uh, to set that. Once you've gone through that kind of, this is the title, this is a synopsis, this is a film, this is a runtime, here's the cast, the crew, uh, these are the awards that we've run, these are the keywords, then the media upload and then the rights. When you click submit, that's the process uh, done from start to finish. If I just go back to this page, if you look on the, the right-hand side, you'll see something titled bulk load. So if you've got a catalog that's maybe 10, 15, 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000 titles 
then you probably wouldn't want to go cut and paste, cut and paste all of this. And what we have there is the means to be able to bulk load 100 or 1,000 titles all in one go. And very simply, all you need to do is effectively is email to us the spreadsheet with all of that metadata into it. And then we'll support you and we will do that bulk load for you. So to make it really simple and easy. So you know, that's how we work with the, the bigger players who have these bigger catalogs. Um, but you know, if you've got one or two films, frankly, it's, it's, it's quicker and easier to, to do the load via the web form that we've just talked through. The uh, second step in the process is uh, once your title is listed, then what can you do to use the platform to promote your content to the people that you meet, right? So the people that email you, the people that you meet perhaps at a film festival uh, or at an event or even down the pub on a Friday night that happened to be in the industry. And they say, oh, send me some information, right? Then um, once you've loaded all of your content, then you can configure yourself one of these. And these are called branded screening rooms. And in the branded screening room, uh, a interested buyer can actually go through and do a complete screening of your piece of content. And just below, I should have made the screen a bit smaller, there is the button that says, make an offer. So the reason this is interesting is because we provide the, you know, the journey for that buyer who's expressed an interest in your film to be able to screen it. And you know, at what point in the journey are they at the hottest in terms of willingness to make an offer to buy it? At the point they've just finished watching it, right? So we put, let's like Amazon, but put the buy now button right next to the thing, right? Well, you know, it doesn't take, take a, to someone to be a rocket scientist that if Amazon figure that's a good idea, then it probably is a good idea. So we put the, the equivalent of that on this page so that a buyer who's just watched your screener can click a button to be able to then send you an offer. Branded screening rooms are free. We don't charge for you to be able to upload your screener for us to host that screener and for us to actually stream the, your, your film to the buyer who's interested in, in buying it. And you can have multiple screening rooms set up. Some people have screening rooms around genres. This is the horror screening room. This is the adventure screening room. This is a children's screening room. You can have any number of screening rooms um, uh, set up. For, for, for your titles. Now, in terms of promoting the screening room, you'll see that up there in the top right-hand side is your own personal unique link. <clears throat> the unique link, uh, when someone clicks on it, will bring them to the site with uh, a little bit of text, and the posters of your content on the outside page. So the buyer knows that they've arrived at the correct front door and all they need to do is to register if they're not already registered or to log in if they're already uh, registered to be able to come in and see the actual screener, right? So again, we give you those tools to be able to promote your content uh, as and when that you need. If I flip now to the buyer's view, um, this is when a buyer who's registered with the platform logs into the platform, they will see this page. Uh, in this page, they're gonna be able to kind of look at all of this interesting content and use the uh, filter buttons at the top to determine, to say, I'm looking for maybe a film or a TV show. I'm looking for something that's you know, released this year. 
I'm looking for something that's available in 4K or HD is okay. I'm looking for something based on the genre and we have all of the genres there for them to pick. So we give them the tools to be able to navigate the catalog. I haven't got all of that uh, laid out uh, because that's more kind of like the buyer's journey. Um, but the um, whole part of that process is that you can then build selections out of those by clicking to the save selection process. And that means that if you're a catalog and you meet someone and they want something specific and you, in your catalog, maybe three or five or 10 of the items in your catalog are relevant, you can build a selection. And then from there, when you look in your profile, you'll see that there's a selection dropdown. And in that selection dropdown, is the selection and just like the screening room the selection also has a unique link which we you can use to be able to promote your selection of content on your website as a footer in your email um, so that you can drive anyone who's interested to come and have a look at this straight to the page and when they log in they can see the title that, uh, that you're bringing them to. So we give them a very smooth user journey for you to be able to promote it and then uh, bring people back to the, uh, to the platform. I'll take a second to read the, uh, the question from Joseph here. So, uh, so the question really is, is, how do I know who's looking at my content? So the answer is, uh, we, we protect the buyer so that uh, when the buyer is interested to connect with you, we give them the tools to be able to make an offer or to ask for a proposal or to make an inquiry to, to you. So this, this arrangement is for a buyer initiated journey. Once they've made that connection with you, then you're connected and you can have a conversation to the messaging, et cetera. If you're wanting to reach out to the buyers and you know, then you can use those links to the selections to your content or to the, your branded screening rooms to be able to send that out to, uh, to the buyers that you're, you're talking to and involved with. <clears throat> so let me take you through uh, although this is not kind of primarily your journey as a, a as a seller, but so that when you receive an offer, you can see how it's built up. So the first thing that a buyer will do when they are reaching out to you to say, I'd license, like to license your film is to tell you where. So the first step is the license region. In this case, I've typed in Singapore. And then the next step, is when, what is the time period? So you see there I chose today uh, for two years and at the bottom you can also see I'm gonna denominate the offer in US dollars, they can put it in any currency they like. The next thing that they need to tell the system so that we can tell you is what is the rights type that they would like to license from you? And you can see there that we capture all of them, free to wear, the fast, the pay TV, S Spot, A or T Vod, EST, and transport. So that's how the buyer will specify to the system so that we can relay that to you what they actually want. Uh, what I did in, in this case as an example was I chose uh, non exclusive AVOD rights. And then the next step that the buyer we take the buyer through is how much money are you going to offer to the seller in order to be able to license this? Now, this comes into the topic of the pricing models. So one of the things that's happened with the advent of the streaming platforms is there are new pricing models that have become popular. In the old days, when the only way that you could watch a piece of content was on pay TV or was on free to air, then the only pricing model was a flat rate. 
And so it becomes a bit of push and shove. My film's worth 50,000, no, it's worth 10,000. Okay, we meet in the middle, it's $30,000. That's it, flat rates, that's done. But because all of the VOD platforms <clears throat> have access to who's watched when, how much, where, and how long, and if it's a VOD, how much advertising is generated, the streaming platforms sometimes will offer flat rate, but most of the time they will use one of these um, performance-based pricing models. Flat rate is simple, uh, we understand that. This option is used by some of the, the streaming platforms where they will denominate their offer you based on how many people have watched your film. So they might offer, I'll offer you simple math, shall we say a dollar per film. And then at each reporting cycle, they'll send you a report to say 2000 people watched your film. So you can send them a, an invoice for $2,000. That's the denomination and the process of how that works. Other VOD platforms prefer to think about how many minutes of content has been streamed. So if you're, I'm gonna make it my, my, the numbers easy. If your film is a hundred minutes long and they stream it to, um, to 200 people, then you'll have 200 times 100 minutes. I think that's 20,000 minutes streamed. And if you, uh, if the offer is for uh, a cent per minute, then you've got 20,000 cents, which is what $2,000, then you know to invoice them for $2,000. So that's how the pricing model would work in that, that way. The last one is relevant only if the buyer is a fast or an AVOD platform, which is funded not by subscription revenue, but is funded by advertising revenue. And if we open that one up, you can see how that looks. And it's very similar for the by viewer and by stream. But in this case, the first box is not you know, the, the count, but it's on what is the percentage share that this streaming platform is willing to give you on the advertising revenue. In this case, the example I put in is 65. Some people offer 65, that would be a bit high. Sometimes it's 60, sometimes it's 55. Quite often it's 50%, you know, with a platforms like Roku and Tubi. So I expect to see numbers like that, maybe 50%. Um, then because we understand that you as a seller may have no clue about this particular streaming platform that we, we are using as an example here in Singapore, then we make sure that this uh, buyer gives you a low end and a high end estimate of what they, they guess that this piece of content on their platform might generate but it is just an estimate. It's not a kind of binding thing, um, but at least it gives you an idea as a seller of what the, the expectation might be. The last bit at the bottom, which is about the minimum guarantee, is where the buyer may make a guarantee to you to say, no matter, even if the, this content you know, never gets viewed by anyone, we will guarantee to pay you that minimum amount. In this case, we typed in 7,500 as an example of the minimum guarantee. So as a seller, you know that, you know, the minimum I'm gonna get from this transaction with this buyer is seven and a half thousand dollars. Could be, you know, $20,000, it could be $30,000 based on the performance. But I know that that's the bottom, that's the floor below which it won't go. Now, some buyers will offer a minimum guarantee. Other buyers may not offer a minimum guarantee. And it's up to you to make your choice as to whether you're willing to accept an offer with no minimum guarantee, uh, or whether you're going to turn down the opportunity uh, and, uh, and insist on a minimum guarantee. 
that's totally your choice when you get the offer from the from the buyer. The next thing that we collect from the buyer so that we can show you is where is this content, where is your content going to run? So they'll tell you the channel or the platform. And then we go through the process of uh, collecting from the buyer are dubs and subs needed and whether that's going to be your responsibility to get done or whether they're going to, to do it themselves and internally. So we capture that. Uh, lastly, a few of the more kind of commercial aspects is the uh, offer they're making you inclusive or exclusive of the materials cost, which means the cost of delivery once you've done the deal, <clears throat> and also uh, how is withholding tax going to be get delivered? Because when you're licensing, this is considered a royalty and therefore withholding tax is relevant. Uh, the last thing is that the buyer will attach their standard terms and conditions, so you can have a look at that and read it in order to assess whether this is an interesting deal and you want to go ahead. A few other kind of anything custom, uh, a little message, um, and then when they press uh, the, the, the submit button, you will get that offer. Um, at the bottom of your page, you'll see the summary of all of this information. And at the bottom of your page will be three buttons, accept, reject, or counter offer. And when you press the counter offer button, you can go and adjust anything, ask for more money, ask for them to do the dubbing and subbing, whatever you want to, to counter, and then pass that back to the buyer. And then equally, they can accept it, reject it, or, or even counter it back to, do, to, to you. So it streamlines the whole process. And every time there is something that requires your attention, like they counter back to you, you will get an alert and an update over email and SMS to let you know that it's an action that you know, the system needs you to take on that process. So let's um, talk about uh, the kind of the, the way of working with distributors and sales reps and, and how that all works together with an online marketplace. So we've built this marketplace uh, knowing that in many cases, uh, you may have a distributor in place, you may have a rep in place. So, you know, how does this work? So the first point, uh, if, you have, <clears throat> if you have that in place, is to kind of understand that when you load your content onto this marketplace, you're not giving us any rights at all. You keep all of those rights to yourself, right? So you're not giving up anything at all. And when the, the system generates an opportunity from a buyer, that lead is sent to you. So you're in control of who you sell to and at what commercial terms. When you and the buyer have ding-dong backwards and forwards until you reach agreement, when both of you click accept, then the commercial and contractual relationship is directly between you as the seller and them as the buyer. We, the platform company, are not a party to the transaction. Yeah, We're simply the enabling bit of technology. Now, why that's important is because the sort of agreements that you may well have in place with a, an agent or a rep or a distributor is all about giving rights to them to do things. And this is why we can work cooperatively with them since you don't give any of those rights to us. We don't demand exclusivity. We're just an, a lead generation platform and a platform that um, makes it kind of quicker and smoother to get the deals done. So we don't legally conflict in any way when there are any existing distribution agreements that you have in place with a distributor or a sales agent or anyone else. Um, what you may well want to do, and we have many people that do this, is come along and list the, the, the title on your platform, even if you have a distribution in place, a distribution in play, agreement in place 
with a distributor, shall we say, in the US or you know, in Eastern Europe or in Asia, go ahead and list the, the title on the platform. If an opportunity comes up from the region where you have a distributor in, in place, then just ask them to register on the platform. And um, we've got a back end piece of technology, which once you have validated that they are your distributor, then they can see the offer. And if you want, you can let them negotiate it on your behalf, but through the platform so that you bring them on board with you and, and they can support you. The other way that we have seen people handle it is to say, uh, you know what, I, I like the fact that the buyer is sending me an offer direct. I'll negotiate it. I'll do the deal, but I will do the right thing by that distributor. And I'll just let them know that actually, hey, good news, a deal was done in the territory that you had rights to. Here is your share. So you do the right thing for them. And, you know, they, they hardly ever get upset for getting a little bit of money for doing no work. You know, very, very hard for them to be upset with you for doing that. Um, it's also interesting to note that actually we have many distributors who are themselves listing the catalog that they've negotiated the distribution rights for on our platform because they see us as an opportunity to help them generate more business. And from their point of view, uh, if, their, if their commission is, say, 30%, they're still quite happy to give us 10 and to keep 20 and to generate revenue for their filmmaker and their principal. So basically, this is designed so that it's very low, low friction and it creates a win-win for the, the filmmaker, the distributor, if there is one, uh, and obviously the buyer. So... Uh, <coughs> So that, that's how we work with the uh, with a distributor or a sales agent. So just kind of starting to wrap up because I've been talking for a little while now, um, but uh, uh, the Rain Dance team and the, the Viola team are very much kind of working hand in hand. You know, we're in, uh, very much here to support both you as a filmmaker and Rain Dance. Uh, as both the kind of the festival organizer. Um, and we're both here to support you with all of the knowledge and experience that we have of how to do this in, in the industry. So I think if it's okay to say, I'm sure, you know, Elliot would, uh, would welcome people reaching out to him saying, oh, you know, I've got this, how do I handle that? Um, and in fact, you know, we may well step in and say, look, yeah, we're happy to, to help you support that negotiation process for you. And in fact, if you're interested, you know, we can even handle that on your behalf if you'd like to, to have that conversation with us. And obviously, we've all been doing this uh, a number of times. And you know, whilst what you do all day, every day is make films, uh, what we do all day, every day is help people do the deals for films. So, you know, we specialize in this end, you can specialize on the other end. Um, there's a question here. Um, can I keep the rights to sell to other platforms too? When you say other platforms, you mean other streaming platforms or, or what, what type of platforms? If, uh, if you could just clarify, other streaming platforms. Um, okay, so let's remember that Viewla is, is not a B2C business. So the average you know, consumer uh, cannot see what's inside the Viola platform. So um, when you list your title on Viola, you don't give Viola any rights to exhibit it at all. So you keep all of the rights to license to as many platforms in as many countries as you want to, either yourself directly or through Viola. We don't ask for exclusivity. So we, we, we make ourselves really as kind of filmmaker friendly, as easy to do business with. You know, you don't give us any rights. We don't ask for exclusivity and you don't have to pay us any money upfront for listing it. You, we will provide you with a screening rooms free of charge 
So, you know, we just make ourselves super easy and flexible to work with. You keep all of the flexibility doing everything else that you've always done. And when we generate revenue for you, then we do ask for a small commission of 10%, which we think is pretty fair, but we only do that on, uh, on, on success. If I could There's interject, if I could interject in to everyone listening, uh, when I first was made aware of Euler, I did a lot of due diligence on the issues of pri uh, piracy and privacy. And I must say that the back end, the machine room that runs the Vueler website is absolutely safe. And it would be very difficult for anyone to pirate anything off of your website or off this website, I should say. Yeah, we, we know how, how precious this intellectual property is. So, we, you know, we, we do take care of it. There's a question here about the trailer. Um, so, uh, you can put the trailer up onto a platform like YouTube or Vimeo and uh, on the media upload, then we give you a little place to give us the, the Vimeo link. Um, but actually, in terms of quality of experience, you, we'd rather you upload the actual trailer itself to us so that we can look after it and stream it properly for you. So if I were to put the three options in kind of like preference, uh, upload the trailer to us uh, is preference number one. Preference number two would be Vimeo. Um, and the reason that we put it second is that we do have many times where people forget that they given that Vimeo link to us and then they go and move it or put a password protection on it and then all of a sudden something breaks right so that's one of the re that's the reason that we put that second um and uh, sadly I, I put the youtube experience down at the bottom because you know frankly you know we we think the last thing that you want to provide is an experience where you're trying to present your content as you know premium high quality high production value with a youtube link where you know when they finish watching it they get ads for kind of kind of regrow your hair or or whatever youtube is advertising um you know or you know some piece of nonsense so i would say you know you may want to put the trailer on youtube for visibility and the general reach but not as the tool that you want to present to a buyer if you want that buyer to make you an offer as high a price as possible for for that piece of content Maybe use a Vimeo, preferably use the, the, the Viewer thing. We don't charge. Uh, then there was a question. Ken, could you present a project, a pre-seed stage? Uh, really interesting question. Um, right at the moment, um, we describe ourselves as a platform for finished content. Then the question become is, becomes, what is finished content? Well, you know, obviously when it's done, post-production is done, it's in the can, it's ready to be delivered, then clearly it's finished content. Um, we, do, we do give a little bit of um, uh, stretch where basically we say, once it's in post, then we're happy for you to come and list it on the platform. Because the thing that we're really kind of like wanting to make sure is that when a buyer sees a piece of content, they can be 99.99% sure that if they make a deal and they agree a price, then it's going to get finished and delivered. So that's why, you know, once it's in post, kind of, there's very little chance that that film will never get completed and never be deliverable. So that's quite nice because you can start to pre-sell rights whilst you're still in post. But any earlier than that, it isn't really a fit. We do have in our roadmap to make an extension and build a, a part of the website to deal with um, ideas that are in development, ideas that are in production and looking for gap financing. We think we know there's a real need for it, uh, but we just haven't got around to building the technology to support it yet. Just one slide before the thank you slide. Um, just wanted to explain 
that um, when you go to the Rain Dance Marketplace and you register there and you upload your film, then uh, it'll show on the Rain Dance Marketplace. Um, and of course, you know, you'll get all the traction uh, of it there and you get your links and everything. But the underlying platform technology, which is the, the Viola platform technology, means that same piece of content will also show up in the Viola.com marketplace. And that, that means that buyers who maybe are in parts of the world that haven't heard about Raindance, but may have heard about Viola, will come here, they still will see your film. Uh, you get the opportunity to, to get your film seen by all of the people who are using the Viola marketplace. But because you registered and you uploaded your film through the Raindance uh, marketplace, we know that you're connected there. And so we make sure that the business model and the recognition and the partnership is fully recognized. So I just really wanted to explain that you, you get the best of both the rain dance infrastructure and brand and support of Elliot and all of his team, as well as being on the Viola marketplace and the support of Viola and Ben and everyone else that we're, inv we're involved with. So it's not an either or, it's not like I'm here or I'm there. When you go to, view, to the rain dance marketplace and you upload it, then you get the support of everyone at Raindance, as well as the support as everyone at Viola. So final, thank you, Paige. Um, if you have questions, I'll put my email address there. I'm, you know, very happy and welcome to field questions. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, there's my LinkedIn address. So you wanna scan the QR code with your phone, it'll take you to the, my LinkedIn page. You can connect with me there. Um, again, more than happy to connect and um, answer your questions and support you and plug you into the rest of the team and give you whatever help you need so that we can help you successfully sell your content globally. Hello, my name is... Sorry, go ahead, Ian. Sorry. I was just going to say, if I missed out answering any of the questions <laughs> on my way through, are there any pending questions I haven't addressed? I think you've been very thorough. Uh, in and again, this is highly transformative as a way that filmmakers can uh, monetize their work. Uh, and hats off to you and your vision for doing that. Um, so thank you very much to everyone listening or watching. And we'll put this on our VOD platform too at Rain Dance, so other people can appreciate this incredible opportunity. Um, and of course, any questions? There's Ian's. Uh, email or you can get a hold of me through Rain Dance. But I'd like to thank you very much again, Ian, and those of you who are still here, everyone's still here, please join me, go to the reaction button, and I'm going to give a heartfelt heart. Thank you, <laughs> Ian. We thank love you we love what you do. It's absolutely brilliant. This is something that when uh, I first heard about it, I could not believe the scope of this and the fact that you could sell your video to, let's say, a South African cable network for five hundred dollars that no one else would know about, but they would because of your seven and a half thousand registered buyers. That is truly phenomenal. Thank you, and it's great to have the partnership with you. We we really cherish that, and we're here to support you too.